Hey, what's going on, folks? So, look, we're going to be reviewing an original Netflix documentary, which is set to be released April 29th. And this story right here, um, you know, there's a lot I want to talk about with it, and we'll break it all down in this review. But what I'm talking about is Murder to Mercy, the Centoya Brown story. And, you know, I'll, 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 I'll speak about who she is in a second. But for me, why this is so interesting is because, like, she's just really just a few years younger than me. So when I really, I really never really had the time to really sit and compile all the events that took place within this story um, and really think about like the timeline of things. And this documentary absolutely did that. Um, and I thought in a very interesting and intriguing way. But uh, Centoya Brown is, um, she at the time was 16 years old. She was on the streets um, and she was on drugs. She had a pimp. Her boyfriend, pimp, you know what I mean? That dynamic. And uh, was a prostitute. And while one night that she was uh, ready to try to separate from him because he was saying that she wasn't bringing in enough money, et cetera, et cetera, she went and got picked up by a guy, went back to his house. She's fearful of this guy and ended up shooting him in the bed while they were next to each other, which she claimed was self-defense. Why evidence was leading towards the fact that it was a robbery slash murder. Um, so, you know, while being 16, she was, you know, arrested into juvenile court. And the whole justice battle was between the idea, especially in the state of Tennessee, which has one of the harshest um, uh, laws for this, is that would she stay in juvenile court or would she be transferred to criminal court because of the crimes that's at hand? So that's pretty much the premise of how this started to how it, uh, we'll get to how it ultimately ends. But I got to say, r truly, this is a very, very interesting story. And I, I think, you know, for people who want to get their their crime and their, their, their crime fix and so on, this is a good documentary to uh, to view. Because, again, I feel like there's a lot of just facts here. There's no directional or child narrative being swayed here. And um, it's just, again, for the 16 years, it's just all compiled all together. And what this documentary I thought did really good is that, uh, oh, I'll get to it in a second. I'm going to make sure I stay uh, online with my notes. Uh, but the, the big thing is that for her being 16 years old when this documentary originally first started, when she first began to being filmed for this, um, I thought she spoke really well as she reflected on the events of the nights and the incidents. I, I just cannot imagine that being in that situation at that age and being as, as, as well as spoken as she was. And I, I'm just, I was just fascinated because you, you, you expect for somebody to be 16 to just crumble and to be all over the place. But she was, I think she was thorough, very, very thorough. But, you know, I thought that this document did a good job in displaying the timeline of her car the incarceration with the significant dates and the age in the timeline and events. Uh, I thought, you know, and then while all that is happening and transpiring through time, you also get a personal testimony at each point. Uh, and then you also got the legal ramifications throughout it all. So while the timeline progresses and the stakes change, they, you know, clearly depict it well for viewers and for somebody who doesn't have any type of legal or justice background, um, you know, just, you know, minimum knowledge and stuff. Uh, I thought it did a good job in resonating what's happening in a way that I'm able to really, ma you know, maintain and kind of manifest everything that's happening to, uh, to really understand the seriousness, the severity of each situation and the options at hand. So I thought it did a really good job at that. So, you know, the next thing I really want to say is that, you know, I could be really wrong, but like, I really think again, like she comes off very intelligent for her age and, you know, and for the situation and everything that's in front of her, the challenge in front of her, she just comes off really very well intelligent. And it's, it's, it's crazy because the more and more I'm going to get into this, you're going to understand why, like, I'm just so kind of mind blown about this because I thought. You know, again, 16 year old woman sitting in front of these massive figures in the courtrooms and, 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 you know, having to fight for her life. And she's just really well spoken, really well and intelligent. And um, I, I, I just I was just mind blown by that. But, uh, you know, the the battle for justice for uh, Centoya just was not an easy battle, uh, you know, and she didn't really have an easy or typical childhood at all, you know. 
it, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it, but like, there's just so much emotion that's poured throughout this documentary from her mom and her adopted mom, excuse me, her adopted mom and then her biological mom. And it's like, whoa, her biological mom played a part into this unlike no other because they never had a relationship and the biological mom and the, and the, um, and the adopted mom had never, had, hadn't spoke in, since the time she had been adopted. So it's like, whoa, we got this really big thing happening and then all this, all these different dynamics are coming apart. It's, it's, it's really, it's, 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 it's a lot. It's, it's really a lot. Um, but the biological mom, Here's here's where things starts to get really like they really start diving deep. When you start hearing about the parallels between the biological mom and her, it's just mind blowing. It's just it's just wow because of just the family tree and the, the genome structure and the history and the troubles. Uh, it's just it's it's a lot because a lot of the same things her mom went through is what Centoya also went through as well, and it's by all means within the DNA there is it's just it's just wild and then the, the the mom meets with the grandmom and then you just see the complete same thing through generations it's, it's really just a lot you know they all suffered from um, alcoholism uh, uh, being raped uh, just the, the abuse the mental abuse the physical abuse they all went through it they all had you know, suffered this really heinous thing throughout their their lives that you know molded them into the the, the the people they are, and it caused you know a ton of mental uh, problems and 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 physical problems at that. Just everything you just you just really see how you know the history of alcohol and the history of sexual abuse just all compass all together that just. Throughout generation to generation, it, it it just kept being passed on, and not even with Centauri and her mom even having a relationship, that it was still apparent that she was the daughter of that lady because it's just the same thing. And they and again, there was no reason for them to they had not they had not met until this point. So it's like to hear the two saying two, you know, on two separate accounts the same thing about their childhood, and even you know her mom had her at sixteen. She was sixteen when she got arrested. It's just like what, like what is going on? You know what I mean? But I, I have to say, Centauri just shows so much courage in this. It's just, it's, it's just mind blowing how much courage she's able to show uh, throughout this entire, this entire, entire process here. Uh, but you know, because what's interesting is before is that you know she really had zero knowledge of her family, and the fact that you know she had no clue about her family roots and the, 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 um, and just, you know, that, that, that gene that's just passed throughout and all of them, just the, the disease traits, the mental traits and so, and so on. But then not only did she discover it, but she had to hear it from the people in the court for the first time. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine thinking you are potentially, you know, sane or stable just to hear in front of you for the first time in court that you aren't? Because of this side of the family that you've never met and how this truly plays a part into who you are, how you think, why do you go about certain things? Could you could you imagine that? Like, that's the type of emotion that she had to go through. It's, it, it was just, you know, it, 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 it was it was a lot. And, you know, for me, you just couldn't help but the root for her. Cause she stayed so positive despite everything that was happening in front of her. She furthered her education and she just really blossomed into a really mature young lady. And, you know, to be honest, she's just an incredibly strong woman. And, you know, along with her legal team, they just did a tremendous job throughout this whole process. Seeing her grow mature on camera uh, while being behind bars and, you know, how why she even continues to smile while all this is happening is just remarkable. And it's just crazy to think that, you know, and why you really don't wish jail on anybody. It's just crazy to think that, you know, maybe her being behind jail was really the blessing in disguise that kept her away from the family history of alcoholism, furthering danger out there or not the the the, the opportunity to grow within her education. She got an associate's degree and a bachelor's degree. She she was doing her thing. 
um, you know, maybe this was the detox from the world around her that she needed. And I know that's a crazy thing to say, but like, you know, with her being able to be so positive and become the woman that she is today, um, you know, all these things came together, which, you know, even though she lost significant time in her, in her freedom, it, 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 it paid dividends because she's just a beautiful person right now. Uh, so it's just, it's just, ama it's, it's just amazing. So the filmmaker, Dan Berman, uh, was been filming her. Berman has been filming her for seven years, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, but then, you know, why she's still behind bars, a, a, a very powerful thing happened. And that's hashtag free Cynthia, Centonia Brown, excuse me, uh, Centoria Brown, excuse me. Uh, and as social media made a, a, a movement about, you know, new laws being changed in Tennessee and why it should apply to her case, which ultimately should end up released, uh, having her being released. So clemency was on the table now where they wanted to go to the mayor to be able to get her released. Uh, so... You know, you can watch the documentary to see how that all plays out um, all the way to the bitter end of this hour and a half documentary. The last thing I will say is that, you know, there's a full, there's a, there, there's a, there's, it's, it's just crazy how things come full circle uh, within this documentary. And I think, you know, some of them are just really mind blowing just from the family dynamics and the, 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 the geological makeup and um, the, the, the history of, uh, of, of mental health issues being passed on and all that. But one in particular is by Preston Ship, And it's just really mind blown. Wait till you hear about how his story and her story just comes full circle together. It's really, it's really mind blowing. But you know, after her serving 14 years, five months from the ages of 16 to 30, you know, will she be released is the question. And you obviously, if you know the story, then you, you know what, you know what ultimately happens. If not, you watch the documentary and you can find out what happened as, as, as far as her, um, being able to apply for clemency, uh, you know, for 15 years, the legal team and herself did a lot of hard work to get to this point. And, um, the documentary did a really good job in reflecting every event up until the point. So that is my review for murder to mercy, the Centoya Brown story, which will be released on Netflix, April 29th. Now that's not the end of this review. Or this video, sort of say, because there's something else that I got to talk about that came out the other day. And I need to get my phone for this one. So, the other day, uh, there was something that came out. And Centoria, Centoria Brown calls out unauthorized Netflix documentary about her life on her social media accounts. And let me get, let me get these quotes. So, Cent Centoria Brown has released a statement distancing herself in the Netflix documentary Murder to Mercy, the Centoria Brown story, saying the project was unauthorized. And I quote, or as she quote, while I was still incarcerated, a producer who has old footage of me made a deal with Netflix as an unauthorized documentary set to be released soon. She explained on Instagram and Twitter, my husband and I are were surprised as everyone else when they first heard about the news because we were not, we did not participate in any way. She ends up saying, and this, you know, obviously this is the document, uh, the, the, um, the document, the <laughs> documentary, the documentary that's going to be releasing soon, she said, but she also further went to say, she finished by saying, however, I am currently in the process of sharing my own story in the right way, in full detail, in a way that depicts and respects the woman I am today. Why I pray that this film highlights things wrong in the justice system, I had nothing to do with the documentary. So there's that. Um, I will say this, and this will this will end off the videos that I I do appreciate this um, this documentary. Yes, she's very evident and and, and 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 prominent in this. And although while being behind bars, she may have thought that you know this was going to help her in a way uh, to 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 bring attention to what's happening. Sure, furthering taking this you know this 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 footage and then selling it to netflix is where i think she crossed the line was like hey well i didn't have no say into that deal although she is the person on camera sure and she's and she's you know genuine about her statements and her testimony sure and, and may have said sure to that the further step into saying hey now go get profitable off of this and don't tell me i think it's where the issue lies here so i look forward to seeing what she be able is able to put out with her husband um, you know, 
as much as I like this as well too, I'm just I'm curious to see what the both of them are going to do. Was what, she going to be able to tell that this one didn't wasn't able to tell? Because I thought this is just really well done with all the right testimonies of people within the legal system, um, and you know with the the family testimonies and stuff like that, and and obviously following her for the period of time that they followed her. I thought it all came together together well. So I'm just curious to see where does her story go from beyond that. But that's all I got. Let me know what you think. And uh, we'll catch you for the next one.